Hi, my name is Steve Zalewski, and I'm here today as a moderator for one of the Sea Vision podcast series. And today we're going to be talking about the evolution of SaaS management, establishing complete control. And I'm fortunate today to have the co-founder of Zlurry, Sethu, and I cannot get his last name right. So I'm going to ask him to help me out here and to go ahead and introduce himself in his last name and then talk a little bit about the journey that he's on, his background and kind of how he got here today. So for the folks that are listening, you can kind of get a sense for the path that Sethu got to and then we're going to talk about the passion for the problem he's trying to solve. So with that, Sethu, the mic is yours. All right. Thank you, Steve. So let me start with the, the most difficult part of the interview. <clears throat> That's my second name. So my name is Sethu Meenakshi Sundaram, right? I think it's probably a very difficult one for a lot of people to pronounce. Um, sometimes I keep during during deal stages and final discussions with some of the CXOs. I, I do joke around saying that, you know what? get my second name right, and I'll probably throw you a 10% discount. And most probably they say, I don't want to, I don't want to really spell your second name. So I'm willing to pay 10% more. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so it's, it's a little complex to spell, to spell my name. Um, right. But, but yeah, Minakti Sundaram is how you, how you do it. Uh, I'm going to start answering the question, Steve, about what got me to this, solving this problem. Right. Uh, it's very counterintuitive. Right. Um, I started to solve this problem along with my co-founders at Asian side because we were not from IT, right? People think you have to be from that space to solve the problem really well, right? But the way I think about this is for any innovation to happen at scale, it should happen only in two ways possible. One is people inside the system should think innovatively or people from outside the system should come into the system to start thinking uh, from ground zero. Uh, in most cases, the second option is easier because they don't come with the baggage. In the first case, it's always harder because you've been in it for too long. The fact that Ritesh Chayat and I don't come from a um, core IT background, I think made us better founders uh, to actually solve this problem from the standpoint of Zluri. Right? Now, Zluri was started amidst the global pandemic in 2020. Um, and this happened while I was in Singapore. Um, right? And um, each one of us were running, a, we were a part of a previous startup. Each one of us were running a different business unit and I was heading a packed market. And you would remember, recall, um, three years ago, now almost four, during pandemic, every company, irrespective of how much cash they had in the bank, had to optimize, right? Had to save. And that's how we started saving. And we realized that as invisible as software was sucking up most money next to real estate, right? And that's when we started saving uh, a lot of money in a span of few weeks, but it was laborious task. And that got us thinking because all of us had enough time and Netflix got boring after two two months of watching it continuously. We went deep into the problem. And that's when we realized that every company had gone through this problem during the pandemic. Just that they didn't know how to define this problem as. And even we didn't know it was it could it was called SaaS management back in the day, not even so formal. And that's when we started saying the whole point about cost is just one fractional part of the problem. There is more issue to it from an access perspective and security perspective. And we said that's a trillion dollar industry right in front of us because enterprise software is growing at 20% CAGR every year and is touted to be at about 2.4 trillion by 2027. And all of that, of that, 90% is going to be on SaaS, 10% is going to be on prem stuff, which means you're talking about almost close to $2 trillion worth of software on the cloud. And there is no way to manage it. We said, this has to be managed, there has to be a product, and that's how the whole journey of Zluri got started uh, for us. And I think the, the fact that in three years we've grown so quick is a validation for um, the problem that we were able to attempt it. And the fact that we were an outsider for solving this problem um, augured well uh, for the industry as well. So that's probably um, the genesis how everything got going for us. Wow. And you shared with me that you've just recently moved to the U.S. So this journey is not just moving at light speed, but you've actually come over to the U.S. as well. Yes. Uh, so I was just saying, uh, right, I think for someone in Singapore who's so used to public transportation, 
here nothing happens without a car <laughs> all right um this is learning the early days here in the us it's just been about 3 weeks now in the us for me um so bay area is my home now um so um so the thing is a us is one of the largest revenue generating markets for slowly and i think if you're committed to the market the only way a company can show commitment to a market is when the founders move and that's one of the reasons i moved here uh, my family is still not with me um so in my wife said term she says you go figure out things first settle in and we'll all fly with you so they're going to be joining me in june but i think there is so much of potential uh, in the us and particularly uh, in the bay area uh, that made me make this move over here with my two founders um, aim still in bangalore um, i moved 10000 miles one way to see where we can take zuri from here on wow that's a commitment and it again it, it's it shows the passion that you have right to want to solve it so with that that's a good kind of next in which was so in your mind right you have a passion to solve this problem so in your own words what is the problem that you're taking on and then we can talk about how gartner and others talk about it but now that we know the journey and to a certain extent the efficiency of the cloud in your own words what is the passion what is the vision that you're building to take the problem that you see and own it for us in the security field sure so um it's again i take some inspiration from amazon right so when jeff bezos founded uh, amazon um it's interesting that he said i read somewhere he said every investment in amazon for the last 30 years have only made on three elements that does not change over time most primes when people want to start up they look at what's the the the, the in thing for today and start a company on that but i think the right way to start a company is based on what things won't change so that the problem you're solving stays relevant for a really long period of time right so there's a parallel he say that amazon he started because people always want things and products better faster cheaper nobody is going to wake up one day and going to say give me something more expensive give me something delayed no way right so if we got sort of thinking if what is similar to that in our industry when we got excited about the problem like i told you we realized that people have found the freedom with saas right they don't want to deploy over a few years for a software to even make it work they can make it work just like this the convenience and ease of use of software won't change over time right clearly and number 2 is start today saas can be bought for a few single digit dollars or at max even 1000 dollars to get started even a complex work um but earlier days of software was a heavy dollar investment now will somebody come back and say they want to go pay heavy amounts to get started nobody is going to say that now these things are not going to change over time what's it going to cost is more hard won for it will they be able to go back to the old world of saying i have all control no way it's going to be a compounding problem over time for them and security as well from an access and risk perspective right which means it and security today have lost control and that's how it's going to be for a foreseeable time then we said can we build a system that brings back control to them and let's keep working on the problem over time as complexity increases right and that's exactly made us start and maybe i keep telling people that sometimes starting a company in the mid 30s has advantages right so i started when i was 35 there's um in in 20s you have the uh, energy but not the experience in your 40s and 50s you will have the experience may or may not energy but in your 30s you have the experience and energy at the right amount which means you start thinking here first for the customer when able to build a company so when we realize that better faster cheaper of software is not going to change and it is continuously going to lose control you need something in between to fix this gap otherwise things are not scalable and this is true to companies of all sizes right and that's how the whole problem of um uh, so whole idea of solving this problem came about and we realized that i can do this for years and years and years together and i will never get bored because every single day over the last 3 years more than 3 years that we've started slurry we've woken up to new set of problems in software right and today for anybody to start solving this problem and to catch up to where we are it's going to take its time another stance steve is for uh, i'm not sure if you know this or many audience would know this but the runway a saas startup today has before a competition enters in their space is just 6 months right it's that lower barrier of entry if that's the case then what gives us the competitive advantage is to solve all of these problems at scale and much faster over time 
so that if anybody tries to start solving for this, it's going to take a lot of time for us to catch up. That gives a competitive advantage as well. So I think all of this put together keeps us going, not just for the longer, but even quicker. Wow. <clears throat> well said. <clears throat> so now I want to pick up on a point that you said here and something we were talking about earlier offline, which was you talked about IT being in control of the cloud and the reality that it's just very difficult, that the cloud is kind of escaping from them. And I asked you whether that was a shadow IT problem or a stealth IT problem for the CIOs and the CISOs to try to run in this hybrid environment. And so you had some very interesting perspectives there. So what I'd like to do is let's tease apart stealth IT versus shadow IT and in your own words, talk about whether they're actually the same thing or whether you think there's some distinctions there that actually are important for the product that you're building. Perfect. So the way I would like to describe this is in three three buckets, right? Today, IT can broadly be categorized as three different ITs. The way I like to describe from a Zlori standpoint is managed IT, unmanaged IT, and shadow IT. And Steve, I think the stealth IT that you just spoke about um, resonates with the man unmanaged IT that I spoke about, right? What it means is um, off the, let's assume 100% of the software stack, today, um, almost 10% is in IT's control, which is a managed IT, IT is aware of. And the second is unmanaged IT, which IT is aware of, but don't have control over, which is the unmanaged IT or stealth IT. And 70% is shadow IT, which IT is not even aware of. Right. So which means if you see from the left to the right, managed IT, unmanaged IT and shadow IT, what's happening is, is the whole visibility and control diminishes. Thereby causing whole security issue, access issue. And hey, I was not even aware this was a problem in my own environment kind of an issue. Right. So I think um, the first problem that we helped IT solve is the visibility problem. With visibility comes control, with controls comes management, and with all of that, you, you are destined to make it a very mature organization, right? So that's why, in fact, the first problem we spent one whole year of building with our initial seed round of funding was building the discovery engine that gives 100% visibility to the tech stack of a, of, a, of a customer, right? And by this, what happens is, with the initial deployment of our platform, you will be able to gain visibility and control over unmanaged IT, the just stealth IT, and the shadow IT part as well, right? And that's exactly how we went about uh, solving for this. And just to add another layer to this is unmanaged IT is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just that, like I told you earlier, people have found the freedom of getting to work quickly. It's the agility innovation that is encouraging unmanaged IT today, which is actually makes IT in the not so right word to use, redundant from a business perspective, right? But the moment IT says, hey, you're using this, I see 10 other departments using the same tool. If you're able to put all of this together, we're able to save money for the company and get better control. With that which a business unit head will say, no, no, I will want to stay alone. He will not going to say that. He will say, okay, let me work with you together. So today, with, by bringing in visibility and control across the stack, IT can go with data points to tell people why they believe IT should be working across the whole stack. And that we've seen giving a lot of success um, for IT to go to BU heads, thereby bringing in stealth IT slowly into managed IT. Well said. <clears throat> Thank you for that differentiation and classification, because I think for a lot of <clears throat> companies out there, like me at Levi's, right, that distinction in how you consider it to either be adversary, an adversarial relationship with IT in the business, or one of simply embracing the business's need to go faster, right? And not trying to place blame so much as trying to put a bubble of protection around the new operating parameters that the business has. And I think he did a wonderful job kind of characterizing that continuum and understanding where you fit. So we've now kind of talked about the background for you, the passion, the problem that we have around management of IT in the cloud. So let's dig in a little bit into kind of how Zlurry solves the problem. And I and I have to 
right? As as a former CISO, always say the Gartner acronym rules all as the bucket by which I look at any of the 4,000 companies and decide what they do. So whether you agree or disagree, right, as an industry, we have to acknowledge kind of the power that the acronym has. So Gartner has positioned you, right, in as a SaaS management platform, so as an SMP. So given that that's true, I'm going to ask, like we did last time, help me on the journey. Do you see yourself as an SMP? What, in your words, is a SaaS management platform? And where are you on the journey, which is what else have you done or where do you see the expansion of that that accurately reflects where Zlurry is on their kind of product roadmap? Great question, right? Um, like we say, I think um, a founder's vision evolves over time, right? So for Gartner to um, call a SaaS management platform, by all means, that's who we were and we are, right? Uh, from a from a product perspective and the problem solving perspective, right? So, but the thing is, um, what we call ourselves today, we're a unified SaaS management platform. By the word unified, what we mean is we not only do SaaS management, we also do access management and access reviews. It's all put together on a single platform, thereby bringing in a sort of a plane, both security and IT teams together as well, right? Without the access reviews and access management, we weren't really true to security in that sense, right? But with these two offerings, now it brings together security and IT together in one plane. Now, what does SaaS management fundamentally mean is visibility to the three kinds of IT I spoke to you about, managed, unmanaged, and shadow. Uh, that's one part. Uh, and number two is optimization. Um, directly, you know, how much cost can you save? Unused licenses, underused licenses, um, um, you know, the undeprovisioned licenses, unassigned licenses, so on and so forth, right? That's clearly the cost aspect of the platform, which comes under SaaS management pure play. And the next one also, it comes under the automation. Um, some tend to agree, some don't, there are two different points of views, which is the whole onboarding and offboarding to the SaaS tools uh, from the same SaaS management platform, right? So an example I keep telling people is why automation is required in a platform like this is because optimization module is like the pill to your migraine, right? <laughs> you can pop it once, but the healthier lifestyle is to have an Apple Watch or a Fitbit for your health, right? So automation provides you that, right? So that's exactly what we have built inside Luri as well, right? So only these three layers actually contain to SaaS management uh, and nothing more than this. And we realize that this again comes with the IT control. Right, all of this matters to IT, and they operate the systems. But the moment, if you want to truly solve the problem, you need to go beyond IT, and they also acknowledge this. Then, who do you bring into solving this problem? Next, we want to solve the access problem, right? IT provisioning and deprovisioning works really well during employees' day one and last day, but in between the entire journey for how many ever years they've been in a company, they need to get continuous access to multiple tools. <clears throat> and today, that's a very ticketing system-driven process which you know is causing a friction with employees because work happens on Slack, whereas access to something happens on ticketing system, which they're not too comfortable with, right? So we said, why don't we merge all of this by Zluri being at the center? So for the IT, we don't change the process, but for employee, we change the experience. And that's how we brought in the whole access management part in between that evolved overall. And then we said, <clears throat> with access comes the question of who has access to what? Who cares about it? Security and IT together. Right, because I think the policy is defined by security, but the execution on a on a quarterly basis based on compliance is done by IT. Right. So then the question is, can we bring in security to look at all the permission levels and entitlements of an employee's access to a software tools on a periodic basis? So if you see, with visibility and control pain I spoke to you about earlier on, doing all of this is nothing but a natural progression. Right? It's not like I had to add a product to just go cross sell upsell because I have to, because that's the right way to solve the problem. Right. And that's how we've ended up solving the whole whole the whole SaaS chaos and helping customers move towards SaaS governance by not only solving for SaaS management, but also for access management and access reviews through a unified uh, positioning today. Very interesting. And so I'm going to ask you this question, 
and based on what you said before, because others are, this is a polarizing question, which was, should an organization that has shadow IT try to remove it or embrace it with a tool like Slurry and why? I would use a different word, uh, recognize it, <laughs> all right? So it's a fa it's a, it's a, I mean, one of the common topics with CIOs that I have continuously is what do they prioritize for, right? Is it the security of the company along with the CISO or is it the agility and innovation of the company for more productivity and more dollars, right? It's, <clears throat> I would say it's a yin and yang in that sense and they have to play that role, right? So which means you can't live, it's not like either or, right? It's this and that together. <clears throat> so then you, and, and it's because of that reason why a system like us really helps, right? So in fact, on Zluri's platform, uh, we love to claim and I, I love to claim and obviously customers have agreed to validate that statement is we help companies discover 100% of the SaaS stack, right? That's a promise we go with. And we built out nine different discovery engines to accomplish that as well, right? Now, customers could ask, hey, by by discovering all the applications in my stack, and if you're not helping me block it, why should I buy your tool, <clears throat> right? I mean, we don't want our tool to be the reason why you block access to all the tools you think is not necessary. Because today's software, I mean, Zluri can recognize 300,000 applications by default, by the way, right? That's what we know of. And I believe there could be more even we do not know of. And you do not know what a, <clears throat> a 200,000 application would be useful for, which means, Nobody has authority to block applications today. But to know that this isn't an environment and to go ask the owner, why did you ha have to get this? What is the purpose? Is something that IT can actually <clears throat> use it for, or security can use it for. And that's exactly what we build Zluri for, right? In a way, I keep telling is, from a product point of view, we don't intend to block applications. We, we want to be more like the, uh, the highway or the freeway mile marker, right? AT and a red circle. It tells you not to go, but if you choose to go, it's a choice. So by telling that 70% of a company is shadow IT, and these are the applications, now choosing to mark as restricted and be aware of it is your choice, but to block you is not something we want to work with, right? That's how we built out the whole, whole platform, thereby trying to find the right balance between agility innovation on the employee side and also control over the IT and security side. So yeah. I hope I was able to get through the question without giving a very polarizing answer. So. Mm, I think there's no right answer. With security, there's no right answer, right? There's yeah. simply an appreciation for where is the right balance of security against cost and expectation. So what's interesting in this conversation, and I think people are picking up on, is on half of your conversation is how do I support IT? And the other half is how do I support security? So, which leads me to the question, are you a security tool or an IT tool, right? And who would run you? Great question, right? Um, we, think, we, we thought a lot about it before launching the access reviews module, right? It's because of that we, we had to work with security as well together. Maybe I'm going to, um, tell what a CIS of uh, uh, Fortune 500 company told me, yep. right? Um, this, I'm not, I can't name him, but this is exactly his answer, right? If he's either watching this or hearing this, he would know who he is. So he said, um, from a from a product perspective, security is going to have a strong say in buying a product like Zluri, right? But and they have a very strong, they will have a strong say in also putting together policies which Zluri should monitor, all right? And I think the role stops there. On a regular basis, the execution of the use of the platform to make sure the policy they set is followed through is going to be an IT's job, which means how should the access reviews be done in the company will be written down by security folks, but executing on a, on a quarterly basis to make sure the company's access policies are aligned to what IT said. So any deviation to remediate access and all of that is something IT would do in collaboration with the managed application owners, like I spoke to you earlier about. So, so I tend to think IT would security will probably have a 20% say on our product and even usage, 
but 80% would still lie with um, IT. And I would like to think with our platform, we are helping security enforce their policies in an auto cruise manner. So, yeah. So let's probe on the identity side. So that seems to be the bridge between security and IT, where you're simply saying, I have to bring both parties together. And the value proposition is I can provide a single piece of technology to address the disparate people and process requirements between the two organizations. So we don't think of security as an additional tax on IT, but we're trying to understand that they have a complementary role for what the business is trying to do, which is to generate more revenue and protect the consumer data, right? So with that, I know that you did, you published an industry survey and automated access reviews. And so what I, what I want is what key insights did you find there, right? As we talk about this bridging between IT and security and the business to be kind of not the glue that stops everything, sticks it, but more like the oil to create that synergy between the organizations where we can use your technology? No, great question, right? So um, one thing we keep telling today is um, identity is a new perimeter that can be breached easily for you to get into your entire house. It's like become that central lock that I can get access to, to go look into every single room inside your house, right? Um, and another thing to think about here, Steve, is the company could have, again, like the whole stealth IT and managed IT that we spoke about. A company could enforce a particular identity tool to work with, right? Could be the Microsofts, the Octas, or the Forge Rocks, Finger IT of the world, whatever centrally IT would choose. But you know that not every software tool in the company actually speaks to that tool, which means even to enter some of the tools um, that you know of, you don't do it through these identity perimeter in the first place. And something I keep telling folks is when a SaaS company becomes so big, their obvious transition is to become an identity company themselves. But then what I mean is if you go look at any application today, any marketing application, it is bound to have login with Salesforce. Right? It, Salesforce is not an identity company in that sense. Right? Same way, any kind of an engineering tool, you would see login with GitHub. Right? And even that's not, GitHub did not meant to be that tool. Right. And this is this can be superseding over the formal identity system of a company. Right. Which means even with that formal enforcement in place, you're going to have different ways of accessing the tools. All right. Uh, and again, quoting one of the CIs who told me, hey, say, so, you know, when did my shadow IT went off the roof that I need a tool like you? I'm like, when? After I put an identity in place. <laughs> it's very oxymoronic, but there is deep insights when he said that, right? When you start putting in the rules is when you have a lot of rule breakers, right? Which otherwise normally you don't really see that to be evident, right? If all of that is going to be the issue at the core level, you can only really imagine what the issues will be at access levels and, and so on and so forth, right? And that's the fundamental problem we want to help you solve as well as customers, which is the first thing we help you do is to, that's also came out in our report as well, right? Um, that more than, 60% of the times, IT is not even aware how people are logging into a tool. And if you do not even know how they're entering your house to a particular software, then there is no way you'll be able to say that I'm managing it well, right? And that's also because something I call it as the SSO tax. The software that you're buying, if it needs to be compliant with the identity system that you have in place with SAML login, you need to move three tiers about enterprise to go buy that. And the cost shoots up by 100K for a tool for no reason, just because it has a tool, which also means a lot of companies are not even buying enterprise version to make it compatible with the identity system, which means by choice, it's breaking, right? So how do you know that? So I think one way which we have solved for the problem is on our platform, in Zluri, you can look at every employee, look at all the tools he or she has access to, and also how they logged into the tool. And we will tell you that. And with that information, you can clearly portray um, a heat map saying that, hey, you know what? That are my tools, and these are different methods of entering those tools. And based on that, you can actually start solving for access in the first place. So I think that streamlining is what uh, actually got a lot of foot in the door. And it's the logical extension of this idea 
actually made access review as a product but because there was uh, enough value to pay, pay uh, for itself by the market and hence that was launched uh, by us so, yeah wow i think that's a really compelling kind of discussion here around where SaaS management platforms, right? SMP that Gartner started with <clears throat> and that you started with, <clears throat> where you've actually understood the true problem, right? Not how you're here to help me, but what is it that I actually have to do for the business? And that you've expanded your product. And I would say not to say there's a new acronym, but I think what you've actually done is highlighted the fact that SMP as an acronym has had to expand and that you're setting the bar to be able to actually address the true problems that we have and not just trying to find a way to describe the SaaS problem versus the on-prem problem. Would you agree with that? Yes, I agree with you, right? Um, that said, again, uh, from a visibility perspective, we do help companies discover even the on-prem applications. We help with that as oh. well. Um, yes, so we have, um, so we connect to MDMs like Jamf and Intunes of the world, through which I can tell you what are the application they're using. If that's not enough, you need more details, you can choose to use Luri's desktop agent as well, outside of the browser agent, uh, to look at installed applications, right? This was launched by us not because we thought through it initially, I'll have to be honest on that, but customers said, as we started going up market to larger, large companies, they said, hey, you like it or not, 10% of my software is going to be on-prem. And if I have to go outside of your platform to go work on that, your platform is as good as nothing because I'm still stepping out, right? So can you add that data also onto the platform? And that's when we started the integration with MDMs and also the desktop agents, through which we were able to get the data. And through that data, obviously, what we cannot do is we can't do automations. The whole onboarding and offboarding we can't do because of no APIs concept and that. But at least from a visibility perspective and access reviews perspective, uh, we're able to automate even for the on-prem today. Really nice story. And I don't mean story of making it up. I'm like, see, this is how you've embraced the problem. And you've, yeah. you've, you've solved the problem to own it as opposed to just fit within the acronym. And then I'm left with having to figure out how I pull it together. Now, I want to pivot to, at the end of the day, solving a problem is only as good as us being able to demonstrate the value to the business of solving the problem. And when I have conversations with my peers and others, it always devolves into two conversations. How am I efficiently running my IT and security organization. So therefore, am I spending the dollar wisely? But the other, and I think even more important is, how effective am I at being able to scale, right, the revenue of the company or effectively stop the attack without having to double the size of the organization to double the revenue? And so efficiency versus effectiveness, I find to be two really key ways of showing value. And since you kind of bridge IT and security, and I know I'm putting you on the spot here, but can you give me a couple of examples, right? Business use cases where you articulate the efficiency value proposition to do more with less, and then the effectiveness right, of being able to stop attack or triple the revenue without tripling the size of the organization. So I'm actually doing less with less. A great question, right? Uh, I think uh, doing more with less is in the air right now. <laughs> I think everybody has been forced to do that. I think that's why with so much of layoffs, still stock markets are over the roof, right? Um, uh, anyways, so the way, one thing, one maybe one data point, the ideal data point is what I've heard. Maybe you can validate that, Steve, for me, is a 150 is to 1 is the ideal number of employees to IT slash security ratio. All right? I've heard people say that. But you know, as a practitioner who was a practitioner, there's anything but true. Right? And which means forever, IT and security are stretched. And we know it. Right? And I sometimes I was um, thinking that it's probably one of the most thankless jobs. Right? Because when everything goes well, nobody really thinks they're there. But 
just one small incident and hell do we even have somebody capable it's a kind of emotional question that starts going over the roof which means it's sort of um, becoming a sort of a thankless job right maybe as a father of two kids i can tell you that sometimes i feel the same <laughs> for all the things <laughs> so somehow as, as as it and security i know that's the reality as well right which means then the whole question of how do you do more with less is probably what they live with and that's exactly the problem we help solve with right and i told you if it stayed just the smp way saying that we help you with visible and control optimization after saving money for the short term and probably leadership applauding you you again going back to the old ways of doing stuff that will again make you come to the same way one year down the line right and and you can't use as a sinusoidal wave hey too much cost let's spice lorry bring it down oh now we're okay let's churn let's so doesn't make sense so we said if we need to be relevant as a company and as a product to our customers um, then what else can we do more and that's why the whole automation came in right so today we say when some let's assume a company is hiring let's say 100 people on a monday 100 people on a friday let's say we are planned weekly hiring even on it is on a holiday security is on a holiday they have to be mindful about all of this to make sure nothing goes wrong because if two people don't have access and what if they end up being cxo it's going to blow over the roof so what we said is we want to make the it and security folks enjoy the holiday and whatever during the time can keep them away things like onboarding and offboarding um provisioning of access to all of the tools can it be done on a zero touch method or rather i like to call it as auto cruise right uh, cruise mode and we've exactly done that so simply put not to go to the complex or depth of it but in zluri you can actually create playbooks by playbooks what i mean is organizational app playbook department app playbook and um, role app playbook so if you're someone who's joining um, in the us in levis uh taking up a role in the finance function as a mid manager it's obvious that you need to have access to a few set of tools you can make all of this as part of the playbooks and when hr adds you to the hrm system or the idp system that becomes a trigger for the glory playbooks to run and give you access and all of this happens with the it getting involved right so with this we know that 100 200 500 1000 people getting onboarded there is no extra work for you and that's how we made the whole experience up seamless and this wouldn't have been possible in the on prem world because of no apis but in the world of saas it is possible because of apis right so i think that's how we've been able to do it same way now access review is part of security one of the bigger problem for them is while i said it owns the execution piece if it doesn't get on time security is responsible as well right so and the bigger problem is hey can you look at net suite permissions can you look at Uh, has it been remediated or has it been checked for all of the data and who has to do that finance has to do that and do you think they get it done with just one email reminders no way and it becomes security and it responsibility to keep on reminding them over time to get it done and large of the company large of the pain so through our access reviews module even this part is fully automated thereby zluri taking care of it repeatedly every quarter and every follow up so that there is no more work to be done on a daily basis for secure and it to take it to a finish line so i think all of this is something that we been able to stitch together from a use case standpoint and that's why i said we've not just an smp but we've added more of this because that is the real value of it and security and also to do more with less and bridging the fine gap between uh, efficiency and effectiveness so i would be remiss <clears throat> as a former ceo at levis i was notorious for asking a founder like you when they came in and talked with me about a solution <clears throat> my question always was okay how does what you do sell more jeans because the only thing my leadership cared about was selling more jeans okay period that is it and so we talked about efficiency effectiveness a business value so as i said i'd be remiss which is okay so now i'm in front of you and you're making the pitch and i ask you okay sethu how does lurie sell more jeans how would you answer the question it's a fantastic question i'm glad i met someone from a similar industry before so i have an answer otherwise i would have caught me off guard <laughs> so <laughs> so one thing uh, you can probably validate this for me um an in, um an industry or a company like levi's has a lot of contract employees right coming into the store and doing which is the which is the major part of the workforce right and they also have access to systems and tools to be productive now i have seen right i think two parts 
one is um as a customer the 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 most easiest win for you you can have as as levi selling me jeans is um just serving me what i need and if you can't do that you lose me and i was right there to buy your jeans and i realized why that happens in many companies to one is very very product specific which is hey there's no size there's no color that's a logistics problem to fix right and the second is hey i want to build systems not working i'm not able to get access to my tool hey can i call my manager oh something's down right and many of the times i see sir i don't have permission to do this i'm like my employee experience goes for a toss and i'm like hey a brand like levi's has lost its charm i would just go on a rant right no it's not by the way i'm a, I'm a big levi's user but i i could go on that rant if i'm unhappy with the employee experience at the store level all right and we realized that as a somebody from it and security one thing we can make sure that never fails is whole systems that working in the store to serve the customers will always be working right and that could be extended towards your e-commerce and d2c and all of that as well so by this what we're saying is for all the contract employees from the day they joined access to all tools on day 1 will be given to them irrespective of which store in which part of the world they join and that's a promise that you can give and by giving that promise you know that they quick to be productive which means they quick to serve the customer hey by that which means we're going to sell more jeans right and i think that's the exact problem we solve for contract employees or there are w9 employees and we're working with a couple of um what i call as the gig economy companies which has a lot of freelance workers on the payroll all of them they use zluri for automated um, access provisioning deprovisioning just for this use case and the beauty when the term gets over if it's a 3 month contract or a 6 month contract zluri automatically removes access on the 6th month thereby saving security so next time if they take the trade secrets to a competitor yes they cannot because they've removed access right so all of this is something that we be able to offer just for contract employees and i believe that should be enticing or, or exciting here for leadership team so i can tell you i talked to an awful lot of founders and i talked to a lot of sales people and i hope a whole lot of them listen to this webinar and how you answered that question because that is a huge leap forward towards owning the business problem that i ultimately as a security practitioner have to solve so Yeah. I have asked you a lot of questions and believe it or not we are at 40 minutes so thank you for taking the time and letting me ask you questions where you didn't know what was coming and so hopefully to our audience that's listening this was brutal truth an authentic conversation around the passion to solve problem and what those problems are But I do want to give you the opportunity at this point is is there something I didn't ask you that you had this burning need to want to be able to talk about. So if so, you know, the floor is yours based on this conversation or whatever else to talk about anything that is top of mind for you that you want to be able to have our podcast audience here. Sure. Um, that was the record of. I never really prepared any, 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 anything inside. But I think um, maybe just a larger thing. Right? As a founder over here, what I've realized is the amount of problem you can solve in the in the SaaS space that a CIO or IT head or a CIS or a security head owns is immense. As somebody from the outside, every day I enjoy the problem, and sometimes I keep telling. the best product managers for your business are actually your customers right just go to them ask a ton of questions and go build it and you will be able to find 100 more customers just like them going to the problem right and i think um uh, as a company zuri has been super fortunate to work with some of the biggest brands who took the leap of faith back in the day when we were no one i mean today obviously with 200 plus customers uh, and growing we are obviously a name to Uh, we need to go together with, but back in the day, I think a lot of customers uh, helped us get here, right? I think be it Tipalty, be it Monday dot com, or uh, be it Block, right, or be it Whoop. These are some of the big names that you know won't sign up the name against us, but they did. And I think as a founder, I'm super grateful for all of them that they've done. So this is my way of saying thank you to them. And to whoever is watching, if that's how we've been able to work with them so far, we promise to work with you as well the similar way if you choose to partner with us. So whenever you think you have a SaaS problem, irrespective of what that is, just think of Zuri 
as a one unified platform for SaaS management, access management, and access reviews. Um, and I'm happy to jump on a call with you and speak with the same passion. So thank you for this opportunity, Steve. Wow. Thank you. So with that, I'd like to bring to close this C Vision podcast with Sethi, the Zluri co-founder, and leave you with this. Listen to the beginning, get his last name right, and there's a 10% discount in it for you. So with that, <laughs> thank you, audience, for listening, and hopefully you have a wonderful rest of the day.